FPL feels like it's really hotting up at the moment as we head into the business end of the season. So here is my team selections and nearly final thoughts on game week 28. Now, it wouldn't be fair to start a video talking about Game Week 28 without quickly looking at the teams with a blank. So we've got Brighton, Fulham, Liverpool, West Ham, Man United and Man City. And I'd hedge a bet that you probably own at least one player from each of Brighton, Man City and Man United at the moment. You're probably going to have Erling Haaland, likely have Marcus Rashford or another United asset and also probably some Brighton thrown in as well with their double that's just happening in Game Week 27. So you have to be cognizant that these teams do not play in game week 28. So I thought it'd be useful just to have a look at the top players for expected points by position. Now these stats are kindly brought to you by my friends at Draft Town. So looking at the goalkeepers, top of the tree this week is Kepa with four and a half expected points with his fixture against Everton. And you've got Arsenal, Villa, Spurs, Wolves, Newcastle, Brentford, Leeds, Leicester, Bournemouth, Southampton in there respective goalkeepers. Top on the list for defenders is Zinchenko. You've got Trippier, Gabriel, White, Saliba and then all of the Chelsea guys below them. So I think from this you can see who are expected to be the top picks um, amongst defenders and goalkeepers for game week 28. Okay, so midfielders and strikers now, and it's no surprise to see the top players for expected points overall come in from these two positions. So leading the way in terms of midfielders, we've got Saka, Martinelli, Odegaard and Trossard, basically the four main Arsenal midfielders. Kane leads the way in terms of strikers, followed by Tony and Watkins. I also like a bit of Hyung min Son that's thrown in there for the midfielders, but you can see the rest of the players there. But essentially, in summary, the Arsenal mids are back to do well in terms of you know the algorithms and underlying stats. And then Kane, Tony, Watkins is the ideal front line for game week 28. And just quickly looking at the clean sheet odds, these sort of follow suit with the top defenders and goalkeepers for expected points. But top of the list, we've got Arsenal, Crystal Palace at home, 58% clean sheet odds. Chelsea with 56% against Everton, Newcastle 48 against Forest, Villa, Tottenham, Wolves and Brentford end off that list. And I'd really say as I go through every clean sheet odds, anything really below 30%, I don't particularly think you can back a clean sheet. Um, yeah, so... The guys on the left, the teams on the left-hand side, should I say, are probably the ones that you'd back, and the guys on the right, probably less so. And then just looking at the goal, anytime goal scoring percentage and goal involvement odds for the game week, Kane tops the list for both of these. Obviously, Saka gets more points for goals and assists. That's why he appears higher up in terms of expected points. Um, but Kane is, is up there certainly in terms of goal involvement and goal scoring percentage for the week. For me personally, I think Harry Kane is probably the best captain. I think out of Kane and Saka, Saka is obviously amazing and has a really good fixture. I just think Kane edges it as the captaincy shout this week. Jesus is up there for Arsenal as well. It's just a matter of you know, deciding whether he's going to play. He could be a punt if you get a bit of intel that he's going to play. Um, don't mind Jesus against Crystal Palace if you may be on a free hit and know he's going to play, but I think we need to await that information later in the week. Um, and yeah, as I was saying, likes of Ivan, Tony, Ollie Watkins, the ideal front three, Kane, Tony, Watkins, they're right up there in terms of goal involvement and goal scoring odds. Okay, now I've got my eye on a couple of players that I'm looking to bring into my team. First up, we've got Ollie Watkins. He plays in game week 28, obviously, and doubles in 29. Now, I'm not playing my free hit in 28, so it means that I'm going to, yeah, whatever players I bring in for game week 28, I stick with in 29. And when you look at the draft hound um, expected points, Ollie Watkins is the top replacement for expected points gained over Erling Haaland. Quite simply, he's got three fixtures in the time that Erling Haaland plays one. Now, we've just got past Tuesday in the Champions League where Erling Haaland scored five goals against Leipzig so it's a bit of a decision really as to whether you bring in Watkins and I think I'm going to leave it till probably the last minute to be honest before deciding and you'll see what I go for on the deadline stream but I'm certainly considering bringing him in he's absolutely nailed to start for Villa at the moment given they've sold Danny Ings to West Ham doesn't have a whole lot of competition for his position he takes the penalties for them and he's in great form he's got six goals in his last seven games in the Premier League and to be honest the Chelsea fixture of those three looks yeah quite tough away at Chelsea you could uh you could 
you know, envisage a Watkins blank in that one. But against Bournemouth and Leicester, I think you could see him scoring. So I think Ollie Watkins is definitely a player that I've got my eye on. And the second player, he's definitely been doing the rounds on Twitter, and rightly so, in my opinion, and that's Ben Chilwell. He certainly looks to be back fit and starting regularly for Chelsea. Obviously, they have progressed to the Champions League quarterfinals, so we do have a bit of Champions League football mixed in, which obviously creates a bit of an issue for them. But in my opinion, Chelsea have got some great long-term fixtures. Chilwell doesn't have a lot of competition for his position. He's got two attacking returns in his last two Premier League games. I know that's not a whole lot of data to stand upon, but it is, you know, it does show he's getting amongst the attacking returns. And for me, comparing him to Rhys James, which I think you probably would do in, in terms of making a transfer decision, I think he's the better option at the moment. Um, Rhys James, probably the better player, but with just his fitness levels, you know, he's either injuring himself getting ill pretty much every week which is obviously a real shame for the player but for fantasy means he's not really that great or that solid of an option whereas I think Chilwell looks to be back fit and starting regularly for Chelsea and getting amongst the attacking return so I think along with Ollie Watkins he's a player I'm definitely considering bringing into my team. And speaking of my team, here is what it's looking like. So I've got Kepa in goal. I've had the Kepa and Raya double up since my wild card in 26. So this is the week to start Kepa, given his expected points and clean sheet odds are much better than that of Brentford and Raya's. Trippier, Zinchenko, Henry and Botman is my back four. As I said, I'm looking to bring in Chilwell. So I could either do that for Estupinian in field 11 or I could bring him in for Henry, field 10, but then have Estupinian for game week uh, 29 on my bench boost. So a bit of an interesting one there because do I back Brentford to keep a clean sheet against Leicester? Probably not. I think Leicester could do well and score, particularly because I've got Madison in my team. So a bit of a decision there. If I want to bring in Chilwell and then who I bring him out for, I, I haven't made up my mind yet, to be honest. And, but those are the two options. I either sell Rico Henry or I sell Estupinian. And then Ollie Watkins is my other one, as I said. He can quite easily come in there for Erling Haaland. Um, but yeah, it just remains to be seen whether I want to bite the bullet and do it, really. I think I will. Um, given I've got two free transfers, I can quite easily transfer Haaland back in in game week 28 or 29, sorry, if I get too scared. But yeah, that's what my team's looking like. I'll just run through the rest of the players. So Matoma, Saka, Madison, midfield. Matoma's obviously not going to play, but he's going to just sit there in my 11 as the, the blanker. Saka and Madison got high hopes for both of these guys this week, I must say. Saka leading the way in terms of expected points, and Madison, I think, is just a really exciting option. And just to, you know, any attacking returns I think you get from Madison just feel better for some reason than some other players, just because he's such a good player on the eye, and yeah, just feels always like a differential, even when he's when he's not. Don't know. Just got a good feeling about Madison this week. Harry Kane is my captain. I think, just as I said before, equal in terms of expected points with Saka, but I just think he's slightly more reliable. And given even Saka's prone to a bit of an early sub, as we saw in the game against Fulham, whereas Kane, he very rarely gets rested. Even in games that Spurs are cruising in, he stays on the pitch for 90 minutes. So for that reason, I've gone for him as my captain. Haaland, decision to be made on a transfer. And then Ivan Tony, definitely up there in terms of expected points. Plays Leicester at home. I think I could quite easily see some goals for him there particularly considering I don't think the Leicester defenders are too good um, for defending corners and Tony can definitely get on the end of some of those and um, Valt Fast got sent off for the weekend just gone so it's going to be Suter and probably a Marty in defence for Leicester and I'm not too sure how many games the two of those have played together so it's going to be a new partnership and I think Leicester looked dodgy at the back anyway so I think Leicester fans will be quite worried about the prospect of facing Ivan Tony at the weekend so for that reason I'm very happy to have him in my team. And there we go. That concludes the video. I hope you enjoyed it, found it useful, and there was a bit of insight there in terms of the top picks per position this week and, of course, how I'm thinking about my team. If you did enjoy it, please leave a like rating, subscribe to the Gold and Gold channel, and let me know in the comments what you think of my transfer ideas and what you would do with my team if you were in my position. I'd be interested to hear it, and if you disagree with any of my picks, I'd also be interested to hear that. I say it in every outro, but FPL is all about difference of opinion, so if your opinion is different to mine, I'd be very interested and not offended to hear about it. I'll see you in the next video, everyone. Take care.